What's up, everybody? It's How To Tuesday. We're down here sitting at Hawks K right now with Captain Brandon Simmons. We're going to talk about some mutton snapper fishing. What's going on, Brandon? Good, man. Just hanging out. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So we're getting ready to go out in just a few minutes to go mutton snapper fishing. And I know that one of the big things that you talked about was creating the sandball mix. That's what we're going to talk about today, about why you do that, why is it important, and exactly how you do that. So uh, for people that don't know, mutton snapper fishing and a lot of other types of reef fishing, you use this sand mix, which is a mix of sand and chum, right? So yeah, yeah. explain to them why, why you would do that. <laughs> So basically, you know, a lot of people go out there and you put your chum in your bag and you're fishing and your chum's slowly going out and it's and it's floating back. Well, that's good. You know, you'll get your yellow tails up. Some people use oats um, to help those fish come up and start feeding a little bit more and get them basically in a frenzy. So while you're fishing them, it's easy to keep them happy. Um, with the sand is what we're what we're trying to do basically is get it to go a little deeper past those yellow tails and, and get down there and you know get those bottom fish fired up on the bottom so we'll make little you know sand balls and we'll drop them over the side and those will shoot down and um, basically once they get to the bottom it's like a big cloud the fish will do the same thing like the yellow tails do on the surface they'll start feeding around it and picking the pieces of chum out of it and stuff and sand basically just creates kind of a, a cloud effect but it murks up the water a little bit to make it a little easier to get the bite so, so for the sand are you doing um just the sand balls dropping them down or are you putting your bait in there because i yeah, know people yeah. do it so, both ways so we'll we'll do a few freebies obviously you know just to get them eating it and then eventually we'll you know throw a sand ball around a baited hook and with with uh you know chunk of ballyhoo or, or whatever you you want to throw in that sand right. ball and you'll send it down there and free spool it all the way down and Normally, when, when they're biting pretty good, it, it happens pretty quick. As soon as it gets down there, they're, they're feeding on everything that's already been down there. They see yours coming down. They're going to move over and, and start eating that one, and uh, you, you'll get your bite and you know bring them up and do it again. Right. So one of the things that I like most about the sandball mix is like if you put out a chum bag, you're basically chumming on the top – three or four feet of the water right? right it's going back depending on the current right. it might not even get down that far oh, exactly and it's going to bring in fish obviously mm -hmm. but when you put the sandballs in they're starting to disintegrate from the moment you put them in all the way down to the bottom so it's leaving you're really chumming like vertically rather right. than just horizontally so yeah. you're the entire water column is benefiting from that exactly and it's it's one of those things you know that why not fish the whole water column see what else is out there right you know so tell people how they would make this like we're we're looking at this right now it's like the consistency of peanut butter yep. maybe kind of chunky peanut butter so what's the secret to making this happen so my secret which is not really a secret you know you, you've got a five pound block of chum and and they all come frozen obviously you set it out in a bucket the night before you're going fishing that way it gives it a chance to thaw out um, you want it, you know, completely thawed out basically in the morning you'll wake up and you'll get your sand, which I just, you know, get some play sand from, from the store and stuff, bags of it. And you'll, you'll mix that in. Sometimes you got to add some water in there just to get it to that right consistency. But, um, you know, you've, you've got it in there, you pour your sand, you get you your gaff or whatever, you know, you may want to mix it with and just make sure you mix it all up thoroughly, get everything completely mixed and, um, like I said, the most important thing is just that consistency. You don't want it too watery because what will happen is it won't you won't be able to make those sand balls. It'll just be like a slop. You know, you'll put it around something. It'll just fall right off. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't want it too dry because then it won't get that cakey feeling. It'll just be like wet sand that basically just falls apart. Right. You know, so you want it to be that perfect consistency where it's kind of sticky like peanut butter and you can get it nice and hard. And that way you know, when you drop it down, it's slowly disintegrating as it gets down to the bottom. Yeah. Um, it seems like, you know, when you mix it up, you mix it with a gaff. Most people mix it with a gaff and mm -hmm. probably the gaff is, is like what was originally just kind of around. Right. That's what you had. And it turns out that that's probably the most effective way to mix it. Because like, if you had like a paddle or any sort of blade type thing, it would be, it's too, it's too much, too almost, much, right? You know, so the gaff is just yeah. enough to, you can to mix shove it up. that gaff down in there and kind of pull up from the bottom is what you want to do. Get everything mixed up. You know, if you had a paddle, it's, it's real hard to right. stick that and, you know, right. mix we, it up. We were even, yeah. even talking about the, the drill with the drywall <laughs> yeah. thing, which <laughs> might, it might be too much too. It might throw it all out. It so all out. turns out that the gaff is the best way to go. And, uh, you're mixing it up looking like, uh, looking like peanut butter and then, uh, then you're good to go. But yeah. I would say that, uh, if you're a reef fisherman that is not using sand, 
Um, they're missing out. Well, they're, you're going to take your game to the next level. Oh, definitely. I mean, for sure. You're going to catch fish you have, you didn't even know were there. Yep. You're going to be fishing in a way that that you were not doing it before because you're you're really delivering the chum all the way down to the bottom. So when those things get down to the bottom and they start to disintegrate, man, that's where the big fish are. The the exactly. muttons are coming in. The black groupers are coming in. The oh, yeah. goliaths are coming in. Everything's coming in down to the bottom, not just on the top. Yep. So good tips. Oh, Captain yeah. Brandon Simmons, if you want to go fishing with Brandon, how do you do it? I, uh, oh man, call up Hox K and you can book us up. I'm All right, sorry. that's it. Call up Hox K. That's a one eight hundred fish three o five. That's the number. That's the number. You call them and you book Captain Brandon Simmons. He's on the end of the blue boat, and uh, you can go out there and check out uh, the reef with some sandballs if you want, or any other types of fishing. Let's you do, do all kinds of stuff. All right, thanks, Brandon. 